Hello one and all and welcome to this very quick feedback video based on the first assessment that you did for population. Now remember that you've got your self-assessment sheets that you need to be filling out as you go and at the end of this video you're going to need to try and re-complete that assessment that you did. So it's vital that you're listening to every question. What I'll do is I'll go through question by question some of the things that went well, some of the things that didn't, then you need to look at your responses to try and work out by your own what went well and even better ifs might be. Okay, right, we'll start off nice and simple and we'll start off nice and easy. Um, first questions that you had, okay, you had those simple three mark questions. It said, what's the difference between natural population change and migration population change? Okay, now most of you recognise that there was a difference between the two. Remember, natural population change is the difference between births and deaths, okay? That could be natural increase or decrease. Make sure you use key words. There are lots of people that just said um, the number of people that die, the number of people that are born. You need to use birth rate, you need to use death rate, okay? Population change. No one really mentioned these words. Population change is all about the numbers of people moving into a country and moving out of a country. So therefore, it is the difference between immigration, the number of people that are coming in, and emigration, the number of people that are moving out. You need to make sure that you do that. Now, some of you started writing about the graph that was below it, but actually, the question didn't ask you to refer to the graph. So if you did refer to the graph, you didn't get any marks. Okay, right, up next then, we've got that simple two-mark question which asks you what infant mortality is. Now, you all understand the concept of infant mortality, but you got some key things wrong that meant that you couldn't get any marks. So, infant mortality is the number of children that die before the age of one per 1,000 of the population. If you put five, you couldn't get any marks. If you didn't put per 1,000 of the population, you couldn't get all the marks that were available to you. So, make sure that you keep that going. Okay, the next question that I want us to go through was the question which looked at some of the different trends on the graph, okay? And the question said, describe and comment on the trends that you can see. Now, describe is a command word that you've come across before, okay? We can make simple descriptions, okay? I could say that this chair that I've got here is green, okay? It's really easy. But when you've been given a graph or a map, you need to use, and crucially, you need to manipulate the data, okay? Now, some people made a reasonable attempt at using a manipulator in the data but they just weren't accurate there's no point in giving me some data that actually doesn't correspond with what the graph is actually telling you now we get to that key word that I've got down there which is comment okay we've not really looked at comment so much but comment is another way of saying explain no one really did this okay to comment you've got to give the reasons for the changes and the fluctuations within the population if you do not give the reasons you cannot get any of the marks so you need to make sure that you you are doing that okay and for the majority of you that was what meant that you missed out on marks you didn't explain the reasons why you might get those fluctuation changes so when you redo that question it's going to be down to you to start thinking about what some of those reasons might be that could explain those population changes okay now we get to the big 15 markets there was one question which talked about the changes within the demographic transition model, okay? Now, you've done a question like this before, and you started to draw population pyramids. This was good. I don't think there was a single person that didn't draw the population pyramids. However, you need to link those population pyramids to your answers. So there's no point in just drawing it and saying this is stage two. You've got to actually explain what that population pyramid shows you and link it to each of those different stages. Some of you started to use generic examples. So you'd say, for example, Brazil in stage three. You need to develop those answers fuller. You've got examples of Japan. You've got examples of the UK. You've now got examples of the Gambia. Use them to explain why those countries specifically are in those stages of the model. Failure to explain meant that your marks got capped at around about level one or level two. So use your examples. Make sure you're using key words. Don't forget things like economically active, young dependents, dependency ratios, all sorts of different things like that. Okay, so make sure that you can do that. But my key thing is that you need to use examples. Okay, 
Then we've got to make sure that you examine two or more stages of the model. Some of you didn't examine two or more stages of the model. Most of you did try to do all of them, which is a fair point, but just check that that's what you've done. Never, ever, ever in an exam say the word kids. Okay, remember, we're talking about children. Okay, kids are baby goats. We're not talking about the number of baby goats that are born and die. Okay, and a lot of you made this mistake. You said that birth rate starts to fall in stage two because of contraception. It doesn't. It's death rate that falls below the birth rate first because death rate starts to, um, sorry, death rate starts to reduce as a consequence of all of those things that we've talked about to do with sanitation and good health care and things like that. Okay, right. Then we get to this one, which is strengths and weaknesses of the demographic transition model. Now, this showed me actually that lots of people had good knowledge of what the strengths and weaknesses are of the demographic transition model. However, most people just listed these are the strengths and these are the weaknesses. Okay, You need to start providing examples and linking the demographic transition model into it. Okay. So, for example, if you said the role of governments is a, is a weakness because it doesn't include it, talk about China's one-child policy and how might that have an influence, okay? Start thinking about some of those population pyramids and how they might be influenced at each of the different stages, okay? If you're talking about it being Eurocentric, explain how it works for us, but how it might not work for an African country because of development aid and things like that that might influence it. Giving examples is crucial, okay? And that's what I would say is your biggest piece of advice with that question. Okay, right, now, next thing that we need to do is to reveal the grade boundaries. Now, some of you might be a bit disappointed when you see these grade boundaries, but based on that test, you needed 25 marks for an A, 23 marks for a B, 20 marks for a C, 18 marks for a D, and 16 marks for an E, okay? Now, remember, watch this video back through again, fill in your self-assessment, and have another go at those questions. Okay, if you've got any questions in the meantime, all you've got to do is give me a shout, send me an email or come and find me at the university. Over and out.